so for our next segment, it's already running. I'm going to introduce my good friend Bill to give us a thought. Woo! Yay! I don't have to be right all the time. <laughs> Yay. As a wild philosophical thought, that's sort of cute, but I actually mean it in a very specific way, and I'd like to give you a few examples from my life to illustrate this. When Occupy Boston started, I said to myself, oh, those guys are just making a bunch of noise, it's not very important. Um, why should I bother? And then I decided, you know what? I don't have to be right about this. I can just go down and meet these people and participate and see what happens. And I did, and I stayed. And that's pretty much been my life ever since, trying to do something to enhance the democracy of our country. When one of the guys there decided that he wanted to get an amendment passed to the Constitution of Massachusetts to state that corporations are not people and money is not speech, I said to myself, oh, this isn't going to work, this is absurd, it's a waste of time, but I don't have to be right all the time. So I just went out and I helped them, and sure, okay, I collected a hundred signatures the first time and a hundred signatures the second time. And, we weren't getting very far, but nonetheless, at least I was doing something for someone I cared about and aiming in the right direction. And so when a couple of weeks ago, Nick called me and said, can you spend two days down at the State House talking to our legislators to get this in session this year? I didn't have to be right. I just went. And I got to spend two days talking to my legislators all of whom were very enthusiastic about the idea that we could establish in our state that corporations are companies who should build things and provide services, and people are what democracy is made out of. We're the ones who vote. We're the ones who should partic be participating in politics. We tell the companies not what to do, not vice versa. So merely because I don't have to be right, I got to participate. A show of hands, I'm sure that many people saw that there was a blockade on I-93 by some protesters a few months ago, a few weeks ago. How many people looked at that and said, yes, this is a great idea. Did you think, yes, these guys are really understanding it? And how many of you said to yourselves, there's got to be a better way to do this. This is insane. These people are going to get people killed. This is not the way to get attention. Yeah. I had all of those thoughts at the same time. I said, well, they are getting front page headlines. And now, those are my friends. I know those people from Occupy. And so I got to ask that same question. Why are we doing these blockades of us 99 percenters? Don't we want to be blockading like the one percenters? And I don't have a straight answer to it, but at least we're talking about it. And we're talking about it partially because, partially because I don't have to be right. I can just ask the questions. Mm -hmm. And so when 350.org started talking about climate change, I didn't have to be right. I could just participate. When the woman who runs Fair Foods said, hey, we're doing this thing, would you come down and shoot us distributing 10,000 pounds of food every single day to the people of Boston? I didn't have to be right about whether it was effective, I could just go down and do it. And I could participate in my society because I don't have to be right. And so when Detective Creed from the Boston Police Department called me up on Monday and said, Bill, would you come down to a coffee shop and talk? I'm a protester. I'm scared of interacting with cops. It gets you killed. It gets you arrested. Cops can lie to you. They don't have to tell the truth. You, tell, you lie to them, you're 
time bars. We talk about this all the time, but nonetheless, I could say, I don't have to be right. I can just go down and meet him and talk. And in this particular case, Detective Creed and Detective Matthew Broderick, Broderick both made the same point. We are the cops. We want people to be safe. Blockading freeways is likely to get people killed. If a rookie cop had seen you taking white, giant white barrels out underneath a freeway bridge, he probably would have shot you. And so I could be there and take that message. And next time, or every time that I'm involved in working with, or establishing, or, or organizing a protest or a march or anything like this, I'm not going to give my own opinion. I'm simply going to repeat what the officers told me. Because I don't have to be right. Mr. Toastmaster.